and welcome back to the week of who would win. This week's who would win, or Wednesday's who would win, because it was from Fatty Fatty, Sasuke Eisen, and Horrible Drawler. I actually thought I had more people suggest this one than that. But they ask, who would win in the fight? Doomsday, the success, I guess it's, <laughs> you know, it's a weird thing to think about that. Yes, Doomsday is a successful experiment, but um, what was it, Bertrand was the guy's name, the scientist? He never actually figured out what he'd do if he wanted. He was just doing it for the sake of science. The successful, perfect life form, more or less. The being who almost can never die, and when he does, he comes back stronger the next time from the thing that killed him. Uh, versus SCP-682, the un the hard, to the incredibly hard or unkillable reptile. Uh, Doomsday, as we know, we know you're, if you're a comic fan, you know Doomsday's backstory. He is the result of an experiment where, I believe, again, is the scientist's name is Bertrand. Um, on ancient Krypton, threw a baby into the prehistoric wilderness, let it die, scooped up what remained, reassembled it, and it came back stronger than before, immune to what killed it previously, until eventually he created this damn thing, which has just the perfect killing life form, capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a early in his career Superman, who was still insanely strong, uh, quote-unquote kill him, uh, and then ultimately came back again. Uh, Doomsday is one of the strongest individuals in the DC pantheon, honestly. Like, it's, there are very few beings that are straight up stronger or could straight up take this thing down. You're talking about individuals who are a multiversal level. Uh, even Darkseid got his shit kicked in by Doomsday at one point. Like, Doomsday just tanked the Omega Beams. Although, I imagine Doomsday, uh, Doomsday, Darkseid wasn't using... Uh, the right ability of the Omega Beam. Because the Omega Beams have many abilities. The Omega Effect has many abilities. Uh, hell, he theoretically could use the Omega Sanction and just sent him away and, you know, through time and all that stuff. Um, of course, that would have screwed up Earth's history and whatnot, but I digress. So, yeah, Doomsday is strong enough to contend with, if not outright match Superman, fast enough to tag the Flash. He has insane regenerative capabilities on the off chance he is damaged. He lacks internal organs, and anytime he is effectively killed, he will come back immune to the thing that uh, killed him previously. Ultimately, if I remember correctly, the way they killed, at least <clears throat> in uh, one of the one of the previous um, uh, not timelines, because there was like the standard run, then there was New Fifty Two, then there was Rebirth. So I think it was was it prior to New Fifty Two. Either way. The way they got rid of him was, in essence, sent him to the end of time. And he basically, then his existence was, like, truly temporally erased. And he couldn't survive that. So, yeah, Doomsday is nuts. The hard-to-kill reptile, though, SCP-682, is a beast of a different color. So, one of the things it's capable of doing is ingesting matter to grow in size. That's one of the things it's capable of doing. It is intelligent, capable of communication, has a biological, similar to, actually similar to Doomsday, has a biological hatred of life, save for one or two beings. Um, and is just, you know, it likes to wreak uh, havoc and carnage. But when you take into consideration uh, that it is able to consume matter and keep growing, and then factor in the, fa uh, the ability that it just adapts to whatever is hurting it. It's not, SCP-860, or I keep saying 862, it's 682, is very unique that um, is, is a different version of what Doomsday has. It's actually not that 86, I keep saying 862, um, 682 is incapable of dying. That's actually not what it is. It's that before it is able to die, it adapts to whatever is killing it and becomes basically immune to that. Uh, when they keep it contained, they have to keep it a bat of like acid. It's like the one thing that is not, um, the acid is like the one thing it can't immediately adapt to, and though it won't kill it, it will keep it contained. Uh, but besides that, I, they've tried incinerating and burning it, suffocating it, and it basically just hard, adapted for harder skin. It gained, like, um, new breathing apparatuses. They've tried other SCPs that are extremely OP in their own right to kill this thing. Uh, hold on. Uh, attempts to, uh, I'm actually going to just look up attempts to kill SCP-682. Hey, I said it right this time. Attempts 
to kill SCP. <laughs> and would you know it's the first one that comes up the minute I put SCP in? Termination attempts. Okay, here. <clears throat> So how many times did the uh, let's see, experiment log? I think it's this one. So I, again, there's a couple SCPs that stand out. Okay, SCP. So let's see. SC, he was exposed to SCP-017, uh, which I can't remember which one that is. Uh, but uh, is 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 this? 682 issued several uh, severe sounds, extremely high volumes, damaging several recording devices. Sound extends uh, several ways, reportedly the most god awful roar by staff. Uh, 017 appears to stumble, then returns to a far corner in containment area. Uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, so that didn't do anything. Uh, another one they tried to do was, uh, uh 063 was refitted with, uh, to the end of a rotator arm, which was deployed. I believe that's the plague doctor. If I'm not, no, the plague doctor, I think is 49. Uh, deployed in the enclosure. Initially, a pr initial approach proved partially successful, with SCP-682 losing more than 20% of its body weight before regenerating, overtaking overtakes the destruction process. Newly regrown tissues are not vulnerable to the eradicated effect of SCP-63. <laughs> SCP uh, now, uh, they're not, I can't, they're not specifying which SCPs these are. Uh, oh, actually, I can just look it up. So, SC, like, so this thing was immune to which one was this? Uh, it was a pale toothbrush, uh, stenciled along the side of an object or word. Uh, toothbrush is spelled incorrectly, though, whether, okay, so, however, whatever the, whatever is touched by the bristle is not separated, separated. Um, oh, hold on one second here. Though, whether it's accidental or purposeful action by the creators of the object, Displays the ability to effortlessly cleave through any and all dead or inorganic matter. Okay, so well, that would actually make sense. Uh, SCP-682 is not inorganic. Why the hell was that? Then they tried SCP-162. 162 um, is a massive fish hooks, fish line, needles, scissors, ob sharp objects. After being in the vicinity, the subject will reportedly feeling drawn to the objects in order to touch it. The desire can extend for several weeks for seeing the item, becoming obsessed in many cases. The draw increases the more uh, you observe it. Touching will immediately result in several hooks becoming embedded in the subject's skin. The experience is extremely painful, much more than normal fish hooks. Struggling in attempt will ensnare the object more. Basically, you just bleed out with this, That's which is kind of messed up. Uh, the, he was exposed to this. He was violently thrashing, emitting several roars and issuing profanity directed at test staff. Becomes entangled in it, primarily in the lower body, head, and lower forearms. Tangling areas undergo massive trauma due to the thrashing. After four minutes of continued exposure, he lunges away from it, severing its lower jaw and left hind limb, and causing severe tissue damage to many areas. Let's move on to a couple. Uh, let's move on to a couple that I'm very well aware of here. Um, there was an incident with SCP-661. It's an acoustic program being developed by researchers with the intent of producing successful countermeasures. Uh, in essence, this uh, he entered a relaxed state consistent with the exposure given command. Uh, he remained unresponsive uh, when given a command. Uh, movement. Uh, no, eventually, he just became immune to it. Um, and then, let's see here. What uh, core... We're, there are two very specific ones that come to mind where it's like, whoa, like this thing just completely nerfed um, two extremely powerful uh, SCPs. Where are, there's a lot of their attempts to kill this guy too. Um, oh, Mr. Deeds. Okay, Mr. Deeds. Now I remember. I think Mr. Deeds is this council being. Okay. Small silver bell. The bell is missing in a ringer. Inside the bell is an inscription, forever mine. Uh, when the bell is shaken and ring a soft chime, shirt well just Caucasian butler um, will appear. And basically, most reasonable requests given result in satisfaction. However, there are limits to what he can do. Uh, so Mr. Deeds, for example, uh, there was an incident where the bell was ringing. Terribly sorry, sorry, I'm afraid I can't. Uh, Mr. Deeds asked if he can kill SCP-682. Again, sir, I'm terribly sorry, but I am afraid I can't. Uh, he said if he can incapacitate. As a matter of fact, depending on how sir means the word incapacitate and how, depending on how long you wish, sir, then yes. It's so basically, put it simply, he couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it. Um, 
Another one was SCP, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, okay, yep. So this one, SCP-738, is basically a um, mad set of mahogany furniture. And basically, you sit down, there's like ethereal beings appear, and they can grant you just about whatever you want. The problem is you need to compensate. So the researcher sat down with the entities what would uh, what would you want in exchange for permanently destroying the entity we refer to as SCP-682 while leaving this planet, its biosphere, its human population, its human civilization, and the SCP Foundation, and the rest of the universe intact? The entities took the, <laughs> basically the entities take the form of the same entity as test two other entities. Basically, said, your fan foundation can't afford it, and you personally definitely couldn't afford it. <laughs> so it's like so basically that goes to say. That, that that's basically saying that look, it is theoretically possible to kill this thing, but the, what it would take is so beyond the measurement of our comprehension that it might as well be considered unkillable. So yeah, Doomsday technically it just can't die at this point, or uh, is it will die but come back even stronger, and SCP-682 can die. But we'll usually adapt before that happens, so it can't die. So who is winning this fight straight out? Doomsday is probably going to start beating the ever-loving shit out of this thing pretty early on. Because he's going to be way beyond C uh, SP uh, 682's physical abilities to start with. Uh, he's just going to... Because he, this is a being that goes toe-to-toe -to -toe and can actually be a bitch next to Superman around in the right context. Dark side even. So, SCP would have to really gain some traction to be able to actually keep up physically with Doomsday. The problem is that with everything SCP-682 has survived, I don't see it just straight out dying. Uh, it, like, like, it could get crushed, snapped in half. Doomsday probably would and Doomsday doesn't have a brain. Doomsday doesn't think. It's pure instinct. So, it, there was a point where it gained intelligence, and that actually hindered it. Uh, because it actually had a fear, an, uh, an unconscious fear of death at that point. But Doomsday generally just doesn't think, so he's just going to try to rip its head off, whatever, and he will regenerate back from that. And then SCP, and then he's going to get stronger. He's, eventually, what is going to happen is SCP will, SCP-682, will eventually get to the point of size and strength where it can contest with Doomsday, and eventually eat it, because it eats and absorbs and converts the matter. So in theory, he's going to eat and convert doomsday and convert that matter now doomsday in theory might come back from that and be immune to that so then it's just a matter of is there any way to put one of these guys down for good in this battle and i think the answer to that is only if and this is a big this is the big question is SCP-682 capable of adapting to a point where it can negate Doomsday's abilities? Where it can basically shut them off while he's maybe consuming him and, uh, and basically kill him. And I have to assume that the problem, is, the thing is, Doomsday is stronger to punch through at other dimensions, like the Phantom Zone. He punched, he literally punched his way out of the Phantom Zone, for God's sake. And that's level of strength that you don't really see even in the SC. I mean, I, let me put it this way. I'm talking about level of raw, pure strength. Not like, you know, abilities. Pure strength you don't usually see in the SCP Foundation, like, world. Even with all the SCP world there is. Like, all the SCPs there are. That level of raw, physical strength just doesn't really exist. There are beings that have abilities that kind of trump stuff like that, sure. But, the, in terms of raw strength, I don't know... If um, if that is a level of strength that is capable of putting down SCP-682 for good. If I were to just give my base opinion, I think that SCP-682 would eventually overtake Doomsday. Because eventually, he's just going to get so freaking big that Doomsday just, even if he attacks, it's not going to matter. He's just going to be an annoyance to him. It's going to get so big, he's going to just consume the entire planet and, and planet and then the all the other planets, star solar eventually just consume the enti entirety of the universe more or less 
And yeah, um, so eventually Doomsday, while maybe not being able to kill, uh, not being able to uh, be killed by SCP-682, um, you wouldn't be able to do anything against them either. And by that's by that standpoint, it would technically be a draw, but I would lean towards 682. It is a tough fight because you got one guy who can who dies, but then just comes back stronger than before. Then you got one guy who, in theory, can die, but nothing has ever been found to kill him. Now, granted, if you would take a character, like I always say, if you take a character and take them out of their own medium and throw them into a different medium, that does change the aspects of what they're what they have to go against. I do believe, because like I said, there are beings that are stronger than Doomsday, 100%. And they are just multiversal and beyond. I do believe if you were to take SCP-682 and throw them in either a DC or Marvel Universe that has beings on a multi, outerversal, hyperversal, all those versal levels, then yes, you would actually end up finding a being capable of killing SCP-682. Doomsday, I just don't think, is one of those beings. I think it'd be a long long fight, but it would ultimately result in either SCP-682 eventually evolving a way to finally put Doomsday down for good, or just evolving to the point where Doomsday can't do anything against this, or excuse me, adapting, I should say, adapting to the point where Doomsday can't do anything anymore against this guy. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. I'm going to go SCP-682. Who do you got, though? Let me know in the comments below, but until then, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Can you imagine... If this were going to be the death battle end of the year. Oh my god. Or just doing them doing a death battle on us to begin with. Ugh. And trust me, if I actually did anime, if I actually did animations, if I if I actually did do like actual fights, like legitimately, I don't know if I'd do this one, but it'd be kind of fun to do. Um, I I don't have the software for that. One day maybe, but I, I'll probably be an old man and barely being able to do it by then. And the first one I would still do is Goku vs. Superman. I think that would be the one I'd start with. Uh, so anyway, I digress. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'll see you folks next time.